Mom sends angry son to walk the dog. Hours later, the puppy returns injured, whining, and limping. Being separated from someone you love changes you. It alters your attitude and shifts the axis on which your world rotates. Hazel's perfect life was shattered by one man's decision, her husband leaving her with a failed marriage and a broken heart. Going through a divorce was her worst nightmare, but she made a vow to herself. She would be strong and independent. She didn't need anyone except herself. Hazel was a stay-at-home mom. She secretly got a job and began earning her own money, working day and night with the goal of becoming financially independent and stable enough to build a new life for herself and her son. Nothing could beat the satisfaction of throwing the divorce papers in her husband's face and detaching him from their lives. You'll never survive without me, her husband said arrogantly. He wasn't prepared for what hit him. Hazel explained how she knew about his affair for a long time but kept quiet. She worked till she was burnt out and now had enough money to take care of their son all on her own. We're going to live a comfortable and happy life without you. I didn't need you then and I sure as hell don't need you now, Hazel said, surprising herself as much as her husband with her newfound confidence. Hazel and her son began their new life. Hazel had an incredible job and earned enough for them to lead a comfortable life. But the divorce transformed Hazel. Although she was smarter and self-confident, the trauma of her marriage had left a mark on her, and she grew less passionate and more practical. Hazel thought emotions were a sign of weakness and did her best to shut them out. The person who bore the brunt of the newer, more steely version of Hazel was her son, Barney. Barney was everything his mother was not. Hazel was a senior teacher and a chairperson of the parent-teacher committee at Barney's school. She wanted to mold her son into something he was not. Hazel ensured Barney was in all the right groups, the debate club, the literary society, and plenty of sports clubs. But Barney was a creative and compassionate child. He lived in fantasies and dreamed of impossible things. He couldn't stand the sight of the homeless and less fortunate and bore an innate urge to help them. He wanted his mother to see the world as he did and understand the suffering. Little did he know that his wish was about to come true. One day, Barney and his mother decided to visit the mall. Whilst leaving, Barney noticed an old man sitting on the side of the road, a brush poised in his hand. Barney was captivated by the refined movements of the paintbrush. His gaze fell on the placard that read, Portrait for $5. Instantly, Barney turned to his mother and begged her to let the man paint a picture of them. Mom, look at how amazing those paintings are! Can we please ask the man to draw us? Please, Mom, I bet you'll enjoy it, Barney cried with excitement. Hazel took one look at the tattered tramp and turned away in disgust. For God's sake, Barney, I don't know what you see in people like him. They simply mint people's money and expect sympathy for no reason. Look at him. He seems fit and alert. Why can't he find a real job? I can't even bear the sight of him. Let's go home, Hazel said in her usual cold manner. With that, she took Barney's hand and led him away. Barney turned back to look at the man and their gaze locked. The man's eyes were a deep blue and held an even deeper sadness. It took only a few seconds for Barney to realize that the old man had overheard his mother. Barney got in the car with a guilty heart. His mood didn't improve once they got home, and he was still sulking at dinner time. More than wanting to help the man, Barney was captivated by his talent. He wanted to learn from him. He wanted to know how someone could paint such beautiful things exquisite enough to stir emotions within him. Barney was extremely upset with his mother, and the more he thought about it, the worse it got. He finally decided to say something. Mom, do you know that the old man, the one outside the mall, heard all the rude things you said about him? He looked so hurt, Mom, Barney said. Hazel didn't seem to understand the effect her words had on Barney, and continued as if her behavior had been all right. Barney, you're a child. You don't know anything about the reality of this world and all the bad people in it, she said. 
But mom, he wasn't a bad man. He was a painter, a very talented one. I wish I could paint as effortlessly as him, and I want to learn how to, Barney replied. He knew his mother would dismiss these as childish ideas, but he had to make her see the truth. You don't want to learn painting, you're just curious. You'll get bored of it one day. Besides, painting isn't going to help you in the real world. You need to be smart and skilled so that you don't end up like those beggars you see on the street. That's why I've put you in all those clubs. Why don't you focus on those? Hazel said, getting irritated with the conversation. But I don't like the clubs and societies, Mom. I'm not interested and I never will be. You can't force me to enjoy them, Barney said, persisting with the conversation. Barney, I'm sick of this. You never appreciate anything I do for you. I work so hard to educate you and give you a good life, and you behave so rudely, Hazel shot back. But I hate the things you do, Mom, because you do them for yourself and not for me. You never listen to what I want or ask about my interests. You're the worst mother in the world, Barney cried. With that, he pushed his plate away and stormed off heading for his room. Hazel was shaken, but she would not let her son behave like that. Barney, get back here now. You don't leave the table until you've eaten, she hissed. I don't want your food. I'm going to my room, Barney yelled back. No, you're not. Not until you've taken Cooper for a walk. Then you can go to your room without any dinner, Hazel said, trying to collect herself. Barney called Cooper and fixed his leash. He got up and left, slamming the front door on his way out. Hazel finished her dinner and cleaned up. She then began her usual routine. Every day after dinner, Barney would take Cooper out for a walk. She knew the routes he followed and he'd be gone for about an hour. She took this time for herself and relaxed. She'd switch on the local news and go through her planner. Today, however, an hour passed, but Barney was not home. She told herself to be patient and not panic. After all, Barney was old enough to navigate the streets. She tried to finish some of her work, but her attempts proved futile. Her mind was racing. Where was Barney? What was taking him so long? Hazel began pacing around the living room impatiently. She made her way to the window, hoping to see her son walking down the street. But the sight that greeted her made her stomach flip. She saw Cooper limping down the sidewalk alone. Hazel ran out of the house towards Cooper. Her dog was badly injured. She was half expecting Barney to come running around the corner, but her mind told her otherwise. She knew something terrible had happened, and she had to act fast. Hazel took Cooper inside and fetched the first aid box and her phone. She dialed 911 and tried to breathe. Hello, came a voice on the other end. Hazel's brave face failed her and she broke down into hysterics. My son is gone, he's missing. He took the dog for a walk and he hasn't come back. I don't know what to do. My son, my child, Hazel cried. Ma'am, it's going to be okay. I have your address right here and I'm sending help. Now, I need you to calm down and give me some more details, the responder said. How could someone expect her to calm down when her child was missing? She tossed the phone aside. After attending to Cooper and helping him as best she could, she told him to be a good boy and stay inside. She was going to find her son. Hazel rushed outside and began scouring the streets. She went to every place she could think of, but by the end of the evening, Barney was nowhere to be found. When she got back, she saw cops standing at her front door. Evening, ma'am. I'm Officer Knox. This is my partner, Reese. Can you tell us about your son? The officer said. Hazel tried to regain her composure and make sense of everything. She replayed the events of the evening, fighting the urge to collapse. The officers thought it was best to begin their investigation in the park, although it was nearly dark and the chances of finding anything were slim. They searched and searched, but despite their efforts, there was still no sign of Barney. Hazel grew more and more desperate, but luck was on their side. As they drew nearer to the exit of the park, something caught Hazel's attention. Wishing it was her imagination, she pointed to something glistening in the dirt. Officer Knox bent down to examine the liquid and confirmed their worst fears. It was blood and it was fresh. Hazel could feel the life leave her body. 
Please, God, no. Officer, please, find my son. I need him to be all right. Barney, oh God, where are you? She cried. Officer Reese emerged from the bushes, holding a shoe in his hand. Hazel confirmed it was Barney's. Sir, there's more blood this way. Seems like a trail, said another officer, pointing to the dirt path ahead. The group followed the patches of blood and soon stumbled upon a shack made from logs and dried grass. The marks of blood disappeared near the door. The officers were alert and took their position surrounding the shack. They approached the cottage and signaling to each other, busted open the door. Acting quickly, the officers hurried inside, expecting to find some sort of maniac killer. They found themselves staring at a frail old man pale to the bone except for his hands, which were stained red with blood. Freeze! Put your hands where we can see them, Officer Knox yelled. He grabbed the old man and pinned him against the wall. Where's the boy? You bring him to us unharmed and we'll go easy, Knox said in a threatening manner. Hazel stood still, taking in the filthy condition of the house, chilled by what she saw. She didn't want to picture her son, hurt and in pain, lying on the dirty floor. She looked at the man, a storm brewing inside her. Where's my son? What have you done to him? She screamed. She nearly struck the man, but a soft voice stopped her. She recognized that voice. It was her son's. Barney emerged from the shadows, propped on crutches and struggling to move forward. Don't hurt him, please. Colin saved my life. I'm alive because of him. He hasn't done anything wrong. Let him go, Barney said desperately. Hazel rushed forward and wrapped Barney in a tight embrace. Tears rushed from her eyes as she looked Barney over. Oh, thank God you're okay. I'm so sorry, sweetie. I love you so much, she said in between sobs. Officer Knox let go of Colin's hand, and everyone waited in anticipation of the full story. Mom, I'm okay because Colin saved me. You need to thank him. He found me and brought me here, Barney said, looking gratefully at Colin. Hazel turned towards Colin and was struck with a realization. She had jumped to conclusions and been so rude. She still had many suspicions, but was willing to hear the man out. How badly had she misunderstood him? Colin, sensing that he should say something, recalled what happened. I was going about my business when I heard the sound of a car suddenly breaking. I ran to the window to see if there had been some sort of an accident and I saw your son lying on the ground. I figured the car must have hit him and driven off. Your son needed help. His leg seemed broken, so I carried him inside. I assumed the dog would follow, but it disappeared. You must understand that my only intentions were to help, Colin said, his voice breaking. Officer Reese gave the man a scornful look. You can't possibly expect us to buy that story. Tell us the truth or you'll face some severe consequences, he said, wanting Colin to be afraid. When you found the kid and realized he was injured, why didn't you call the police? Officer Knox asked, not quite trusting the old tramp. I don't have a phone, officer, replied Colin with an air of embarrassment. I understand that you're hesitant to believe me, but I have no reason to lie. I got kicked out by my wife and I have no children. There is not a soul I can speak to and I spend my time alone in this little shack, surrounded by my art. It's my mini gallery, I suppose. I wanted to help Barney and I gave him those crutches to support him. They were my late brothers, he explained. Hazel, fully regaining control of her emotions, finally spoke. You're the painter who sits outside the mall, aren't you? Yes, ma'am. I recognized your son as well. He has a deep interest in art and was fascinated by my work, said Colin, looking respectfully at Barney. Thank you so much for taking care of my son. I was ill-mannered and presumptuous and completely misjudged you. I'm so sorry. I hope you can forgive my behavior, Hazel apologized. You said you saw the car that hit Barney? Do you remember the number on the license plate? Asked Officer Knox. Yes, officer, I saw the car. Unfortunately, I have a bad memory when it comes to numbers. But I could draw you a picture of the model if that would be helpful, Colin offered. Officer Knox agreed and Colin drew them a picture of a red Chevrolet pickup. The officers thanked Colin and, with his precise painting, were able to track down the car within a week. They arrested the driver and Barney and Cooper got the justice they deserved. For Hazel, the entire experience was humbling to say the least. 
She adjusted her attitude both towards her son and the less fortunate people. She paid Colin a visit and decided to heed his advice. Her son was indeed very interested in the world of art, so she hired Colin to be his art teacher. The job proved beneficial for Colin and Barney, who was overjoyed at the prospect of learning art. But life is ever-changing. Hazel received a promotion at work, and it meant that she and Barney had to move to another city. It broke Barney's heart to say goodbye to Colin, and as a sign of appreciation, he gave Colin a parting gift, a phone. Colin hugged his favorite student and promised to call. Now that Colin was no longer teaching, Colin's days soon turned melancholy and monotonous, never suspecting that Hazel, his guardian angel, had taken care of everything. One fine, life-changing morning, Colin was awoken by a knock on his door. Outside, he found several parents with their children lined up to speak with him. Hazel had told all the parents at Barney's school about his art and had recommended that their children take lessons from him. From that day on, the tramp became a respected teacher whose days were occupied by inquisitive minds eager to learn. Every day he would look towards the heavens and thank God for the kindness and love Hazel and Barney had showed him. His lips, curved in a soft smile, would whisper a little prayer for the mother and son who were now his family. Well, that concludes this story. If you found this story interesting, please be sure to let us know what you found most interesting in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one. See you later.